While I have your attention, I have two other channels you should check out when you get a chance. Edge of Reality is where I talk about cryptids and the paranormal, anything that is creepy, crawly, and outside of the realm of science. Edge's World of Monsters is where I tackle basically anything fictitious, whether that be kaiju or dragons. There isn't a lot of science communication out there on the science of reproduction. Hey, don't look at me, I ain't gonna start doing it. But I do want to start talking about reproduction in the context of paleontology. This is the niche of all niches. No matter how educational it may be, YouTube is run by a bunch of money-hungry, data-driven ghouls. So as global society becomes more and more puritanical, so shall YouTube. This makes talking about the science of reproduction rather restrictive. That said, I will still continue to talk about prehistoric penises and cloacae. The fossil record is largely devoid of such hard, soft tissues. Yeah, the sex lives of prehistoric animals that have no living descendants or cousins are pretty much a complete void. However, every now and again, some super special fossil sites were able to preserve some semblance of ancient reproduction and genitalia. These sites are referred to as Lagerstätten, which I believe should be pronounced Lagerstätte, but then again it seems the German and Portuguese speaking audience members are the pickiest. Yes, I do look up pronunciations, and I guess those videos are wrong, unless I just did it right? What? It's just an ordinary American Lagerstätte. Oh my goodness! These Lagerstätten are sites of extreme detail. The conditions in which the fossils were deposited and fossilization began were so pristine and specific that soft tissues can be preserved. Creationists hop off my core sample. The organic material is gone, replaced by materials, but the soft tissue is the stuff that has been replaced. So you can still see the soft tissue, it's just, you know, hard now. These sites can be found all over the world, but they are generally rarer than the average type of fossil preservation. Well, to be fair, there are two types of Lagerstätte. Konzentrat Lagerstätten, which is just a huge concentration of remains in a single bone bed. And Konservat Lagerstätten, which is what almost everyone actually means when they just say Lagerstätten. Super well-preserved fossils in a single site or across a huge rock unit. One of the many Konservat Lagerstätten is the Messel Pit, which is really just a single quarry in the village of Messel in Germany. The quarry is the only outcrop of the eponymous Messel Formation, which dates to the Eocene Epoch around 47 million years ago, and preserves the hard parts and soft tissues of mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, and insects in lithified sediment known as oil shale or bituminous shale, which was laid down in a huge lake. The name may not be familiar to everyone, but its inclusion in a certain BBC documentary may be. The first episode of Walking with Beasts takes place in Messel during the Eocene. Most of the animals in the episode were found in the Messel pit, except for Ambulocetus, which is only known from Pakistan. Anyways, Eocene Messel was subtropical, covered in a blanket of lush forests with giant volcanically active lakes all over the place. So, knowing the climate and environment at the time and place, what do you think would be relatively common? Aside from the nasty-ass bugs sucking blood and stuff, reptiles. And no reptile loves giant lakes more than turtles. Well, crocs do, and they have been found in abundance, but I want to talk about turtles, damn it. Okay, so maybe I did a little hyperbole. Technically, between three and five species of turtles lived in the Messel Pit. Neochiles franzini, Paleoamida mazeliana, and Aleochiles crassusculpta. The genus Aleochiles is quite widespread. There are currently seven valid species. Aleochiles delhedae from Eocene Belgium, Spain, and England. Aleochiles libica from Miocene Libya. Aleochiles lignanica from Paleocene or Eocene China. Aleochiles magnifica from Eocene Myanmar. Aleochiles parerei from Eocene France. Aleochiles liliae from Miocene Mexico. And the most relevant, Aleochiles crassusculpta, of course. It's the last one here I want to focus in on. 
Aleochiles crassisculpta, has been known to science since 1922 and from a bunch of specimens. Technically, 51 specimens have been found. Paleontologists Walter Joyce, Norbert Micklish, Stefan Schall, and Torsten Scheer published a paper in 2012 in Biology Letters in which they prove direct evidence of sexual dimorphism in this species using nine pairs of the turtles that have been found in close association with one another. Seven of the pairs were in direct contact. In fact, this author team found evidence that these seven pairs were in the process of mating when they died. Their proof is that their bodies are arranged in the same way that live turtles are when mating. Their shells are touching near the tail and cloaca, and the tails are entwined and overlapping in such a way that is only seen in mating turtles and would only have occurred seven times if the pairs were mating. It was found that the males were 17% smaller than the females and had longer tails, while the females had tails that often did not extend beyond the shell margin and had more mobile plastrons. These turtle fossils are therefore the only vertebrate fossils ever found mating when they died. Plenty of invertebrates have been found, but this is the first backbone enjoyer. If you know anything about turtle phalluses, then there is no surprise as to how they didn't just detach and swim away before dying. But the real mystery here is how they actually died at all. You don't really see this sort of thing happen all too often in today's turtles. So what gives? Well, the lakes that used to be the mesal pit may be all the evidence needed. The cause of death for all the animals found in the mesal pit has had two major hypotheses over the years. One is that the lakes belched out deadly gases. This is what is seen in Walking with Beasts. It makes sense because the area was very geologically active during the Eocene. Periodic gas release would explain the variety of animals found in the pit. Aquatic species are found, but tons of terrestrial animals and flying animals that are rare even in Lagerstätten, like bats. The other hypothesis is death by cyanobacterial blooms near the water surface that poisoned both land animals drinking the water and aquatic animals living in it. The bacteria hypothesis has been determined to make less sense because of the turtles. You see, Allochiles belongs to the Caretochilidae, a family whose only living member is the pig-nosed or fly river turtle, Caretochiles in Sculpta. Based on the positions and anatomy of Eleochiles, they reproduced in pretty much the exact same way as the modern pig-nosed turtle, which means the male and female swam up to the water surface, the male mounted and inserted himself, and then the two would freeze together while the magic happened slowly sinking further and further until they finished their business, unlocked, and swam away to get some air. If the bacteria hypothesis were true, it would not make sense with what is seen in the turtles, as they wouldn't be able to live in a toxic polluted lake and then also swim up to the also toxic blooming bacteria covered water surface. They would have died before they got the chance to mate. On top of that, the author team infer that Aleochiles probably had breathable skin, devoid of the scales of other turtles. I'm sure you've heard the anecdote that some turtles can take oxygen in through their cloaca. This is true in some turtle species, but not all, and other turtle species, more closely related to the Caretochilids, have a special adaptation to take in oxygen through their skin in order to stay underwater for longer periods. So, if the Aleochiles had this sort of adaptation, then they would have been susceptible to the bacterial bloom far before mating. To add in some more evidence against the bloom, the authors report that no mass accumulations of animals have been found in the mesal pit, no cyanobacterial fossils have been found, and there are a bunch of aquatic animals of many different animal groups, which indicates a relatively healthy ecosystem, aside from the periodic deaths, of course. So, either these turtles died in a period when toxic gases farted out of the lake, or there was an anoxic layer of the lake that they sunk to and then suffocated in before they could unlock and swim away. Their skin would have absorbed the toxic anoxic water near the bottom of the lake and killed them. Too bad these poor turtles never got a chance to lay some eggs, because their dedication to reproducing is commendable. 
Anyway, there's a bittersweet prehistoric story for your Valentine's Day month. Oh, also this video is inspired by an entry in Dr. Dean Lomax's book, Locked in Time. Check it out when you get a chance. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.